Hello everybody and welcome to this video where we are going to talk about stuff and maybe have a conversation. I have been wanting to do the garbagist tag ever since I saw it. Um, I thought it was really interesting. And then there was a part of me that felt a little, a little pushed in a corner because I feel like um, the majority of the stuff I read is trash anyway, like, or considered trash. And I was like, oh, so is this poking fun at me? Um, no, but I've been wanting to do it and I might do it. I might do it. I know we're like kind of in the month already. So if I'm gonna shit, I gotta shit or else I gotta get off the pot. That was graphic. So because I have such a mouth on me um, that so many of you have been pointing out recently. Um, I figured I should weigh in a little bit on some thoughts about garbage. Uh, Bookish, Brian at Bookish, did a video today um, about highbrow and lowbrow, and even medium brow, and I think unibrow. I think um, there was a little bit of that in there too. What I liked about his video was the historical journey. He took the people who, his viewers, he took his viewers on, explaining um, socioeconomics and how different brows um, started. I wanted to add something to that, which is, I've talked about this before, but what a lot of people do not get and do not understand what a big fucking deal it was was I believe it was 1949 the Fawcett um, publishing company Fawcett Books they started a new line called Fawcett Gold Medal um, and you've seen those books in my videos before the reason why this was such a huge deal is because this was the first time original novels were being released for the first time in paperback. Meaning, before that, books were released in hardback editions. And if that book became famous enough, it would get a paperback edition. And Fawcett had another like sub-company called Crest, that um, put out a lot of stuff like that. So like all of your like Mark Twain and Shakespeare and um, stuff like that. Those are obviously the only two um, novelists I've, I've ever heard of. So that's all I got for you. And so when Fawcett did this thing and started doing paperback originals it took a little bit like maybe a year or two because there was a lot of companies saying what the fuck are you doing you're going to destroy our industry like do not fucking do this like you're going to like rip the bottom out of like how we sell hardback books like what what are you fucking thinking and when this happened because mark also talked about um or i'm sorry not mark Brian also talked about um, the uh, 20s and the big boom of the pulps. And again, like the um, dime novels and penny dreadfuls and shit like that. That had been going on since before the turn of the century. But the big, huge boom of pulps really took off in the 20s and 30s. And that is where most writers cut their teeth and made their money. And then what ended up happening was when Fawcett did this amazing thing, making the gold medal books, between that, between the wars, between um, the slicks, like slick magazines um, gaining prominence, that all killed the pulps. Because now, instead of writing for, like, um, a penny a word or whatever, these guys could go, oh, I could get, like, 
a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars or ten thousand dollars for just writing one novel okay fuck it i'll do it like sign me up and i think and this might just be me but i really think that there became a push from the elite the upper echelon the publishing houses that paperback originals were lowbrow now yes paperback originals relied just like the pulps did on um racy titles and racy artwork and um alluring and stuff like that but a lot of times like with um the schlock films that came out in the 60s and 70s a lot of times a title would sound completely salacious and not have anything to do with the actual story like what's that bruno fisher book i like um house of flesh like it it's so like um not even like what the story is about at all um and there's a bunch of other like that but anyway so I think there becomes kind of like a narrative that companies will put out to save their fucking ass. And it's just marketing. It's branding. It's the whole fucking thing. And in doing that, a lot of people like that trickles down. And then we get more um, of the distinctions between classes or the highbrow and lowbrow literature. Now, I think what may have made things different was that in the 80s, mainly, a lot of people got rich making trashy horror novels, okay? So then there was this, like, divide where it was like, that's trash and that's not literature, but goddamn, those books are selling a lot. So a lot of companies like started horror imprints and stuff like that. And then, as we have seen, as time goes on, a lot of these writers who started off doing one thing kind of branch off and try to be more higher brow. And I think the problem we're at now between, um, like, YA and all this other stuff, um, contemporary literature, um, is I think really when the highbrow and lowbrow comes up and how it's going to go in the future here is that highbrow is going to basically be anything that has been released by an actual big publishing house. Lowbrow will be the things that were put out by self-published authors mainly. Um, and then you might be able to get some of the more like boutique presses that do really interesting work and really interesting um, bindings and um, stuff like that. That might be considered more um, high art. Um, but I really think the the difference between literature and trash is going to end up being something as silly as traditionally published, self-published. So I don't really um, know how that's going to go, but um, I feel like that's where it's going. So what what are your what are your takes on this? Um, and should I do the Gerberzish tag? Is that something that sounds interesting? Let me know down below, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye bye. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon, I appreciate the hell out of you guys, and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.